Hello guys, welcome back and welcome to the next installment of Movie and Stitch. If this is the first Movie and Stitch video that you've come across, definitely feel free to check out the link below to an introduction video for this collaborative alphabet themed movie slash crochet project -y challenge thing. <laughs> February was a little bit more hectic than usual my end, so apologies this is a little late in going up. However, today I'd love to share some thoughts with you on the movie that I chose to watch that begins with the letter C, and of course show you the amigurumi that I made to go along with, inspired by said movie, and I tell you what, he's, he's flippin' adorable. I'll also then be announcing my D movie along with the amigurumi that I plan to make whilst watching that. And, if you think today's Amy is cute as heck, oh, wait till the next one, oh my god. So let's crack on, shall we? The movie I chose to watch that begins with the letter C is kind of already sitting right there and ruining my whole introductory spiel here, but it was uh, a DreamWorks animation collaboration with Aardman Productions back in 2000 and it is of course Chicken Run. I have seen this film so many times before and it was an absolute joy to watch it again for the umpteenth time. <laughs> if you have yet to see this film it is essentially a claymation ripoff of The Great Escape featuring chickens. Set down on the Tweedy's farm we are introduced to some very desperate yet surprisingly resourceful chickens led by their determined and driven leader Ginger. These chickens want nothing more than to escape their confines and roam free upon the green green grass that they long for on the other side of the fences that keep them contained and trapped in a very mundane existence. Escape attempt after escape attempt is made but sadly none prove to be successful and with Mrs Tweedy's ever looming axe ready and willing to chop their heads off if they don't produce enough eggs, things are getting bleaker and bleaker by the day. Things only get worse when fed up with just scraping by, Mrs Tweedy decides to go from selling eggs to selling pies, more specifically to selling chicken pies. So with the ante well and truly turned up and with the delivery of an industrial sized pie making machine, it's now or never for these chickens to make their getaway. With the help, question mark, of a cocky, pun intended, rooster named Rocky, can the ladies make their great escape? I love this film for many reasons, but three reasons come immediately to mind. Number one, the brilliant artistry of the folks over at Aardman. Aardman Productions? Just Aardman. Not entirely sure. But they never cease to amaze. And each and every one of their productions is just so, so impressive to behold. These guys have been in the game of claymation for such a long time. They really are the pros when it comes to this art form. From the days of Morph, remember Morph? I loved Morph. To their work on Peter Gabriel's timelessly stunning music video for the song Sledgehammer. The guys at Aardman did that and it still blows my brain every time I see it. I'll leave a link to it down below if you've yet to see it or it's been a while. It's just, it's still to this day so fresh and you look at it thinking, how on earth did they do that? And of course they are so well known for and beloved for bringing us Wallace and Gromit and their adventures, spin-off series with Shaun the Sheep. It just, everything they do, it's just so iconic and just so so much fun to watch. They always amaze me with their creativity, with their ingenuity, and just with the way they breathe such life and personality into little lumps of plasticine. <laughs> Another reason that comes to mind as to why I love Aardman's production so much, and it's on show in spades in Chicken Run, are their characters. Their skill at creating such memorable characters. Rocky the Rooster, the lovable rogue, dishonest, unreliable, yet incredibly charming, voiced by Mel Gibson. Ginger, voiced by the wonderful Julia Sawala, I hope I'm saying that properly, but AKA Safi from Abfab. I thought she was a great choice to voice the gutsy and brave feathered heroine. Her voice has such conviction and determination and strength and it commands respect and authority and attention. And yet she can also bring it down and infuse it with this lovely soft lull. And it's just so, so lovely and vulnerable and soft. And when she's upset or unsure, it comes through so, so well. Just such a fantastic performance. Fowler, 
is a personal favourite. I can't talk about him too much without giving away some of my favourite moments in the film, and I don't want to do that if you've yet to see this one. But he really comes into his own at the end of the film when he's called upon. Uh, again, I won't say too much, but oh, he just cracks me up. He's, he's your typical ex-military sort of very British <laughs> officer, and uh, he just cracks me up, he's fantastic. Mac is bloody awesome, and I adored Lynn Ferguson, who voices Mac in a series back in the day called No Angels. Does anyone remember, did anyone else see that? I love that series. Then of course we have Babs, otherwise known as the non-brains of the outfit, voiced by the delightful Jane Horrocks, AKA the eccentric and zany Bubbles from Abfab, another Abfab person, but her voice is just perfect. Ah, so many wonderfully rich characters, jam-packed with personality and life. And again, it just blows my mind, and it's such a feat when we're talking about the fact that they are little painted pieces of plastic. And the third thing that comes to mind when I think of Chicken Run, and actually Aardman Productions in general, more specifically Wallace and Gromit and Chicken Run, are the contraptions that they come up with. I don't know how the heck they think of them. The sort of mechanical inventions that appear. They are just so cool and they often feature in the very climactic, perilous scenes in the films. And uh, in Chicken Run, it's no exception. We have the industrial sized pie making machine and that whole scene with Rocky trying to rescue ginger from its clutches. I just find so stunning to look at visually. I, I just, how do they do it? So many angles, so many mechanisms, so many things timed to perfection. And when you realize they are literally going in there, moving something slightly, stepping back, taking a picture, going in again, oh, it just blows your mind. The patience, the skill, the level of detail, they are just some of the coolest scenes. Also at the end of the film, there is another contraption that is introduced, I won't give it away, but it's, down, it's darn cool. I love it. I love seeing it. I oh, can't talk about it, but it's fantastic. <laughs> so I guess I just really love the sort of salute that they give to engineering and the imagination that goes into these machines and contraptions that feature so heavily in their productions. And in Chicken Run, it's just as, just as epic. And I, I just love seeing what they come up with. So of course, if you are yet to see Chicken Run, I highly recommend checking it out. It just blows my brain every time I see it. The story is great. It's a lot of fun. It's very funny. And uh, just when you realise and really think about the amount of work that goes into it, oh, just phenomenal. Definitely check it out. On to the Amigurumi that I whipped up inspired by this film. Now, if you guys remember last time I checked in, I wasn't sure which Ami I was going to go with. And I popped up three possibilities and asked you guys to comment and say which one you thought would be the cutest and which one I should have a go at. Thank you so much to all of you who commented and let me know what you thought. I ended up going with the front runner who got many votes, it must be said, and the pattern is just simply called Rooster by Zan Mary, and I'll be sure to leave a link to it down below. It is free, it's over on her blog, so definitely check it out. If you think this little rooster is a little bit cute, I, I tend to think he is, I'm in love. I'm in love. I know I say this every time, but honest to goodness. Are we ready to meet Rooster? <clears throat> I mean, <laughs> he's just... I swear, I just can't stop smiling with these Amis. They are just the cutest. Look look at the tail feathers. I mean, come on. Perfect. Oh, my God. This is Rooster. As I said, it's a free pattern. It's fantastic. It was a little bit fiddlier than the other two Amis that I've made in this series so far. He does have a few bits that you've got to sew on, it must be said. And also kind, not tricky, but you definitely have to watch and concentrate on what you're doing when it comes to his wings here. It's blowing out quite a bit, sorry. Um, but they are, yeah, see, it, they are crocheted in the round and then you just join uh, all three together with the next round. I'm not really, I'm not really explaining this properly. But if you're an Ami crochet, you sort of know what I'm getting at. The same goes for the toes there. Uh, and then you sew all the bits together, of course. But uh, a little bit fiddly, lots of little separate bits um, to join together. There's his little comb there. So cute. And his little beak. These are called wattles. I didn't know that before. So they're his wattles. Um, but honest to goodness, I <laughs> love his legs, the little stumpy bits here, whatever they're called. <laughs> I think they look fantastic. 
And just the tail feathers are cute as heck. I don't think he's designed to sit, um, but he will if you sit him up against something, of course. And I just love the way his little feet sort of pop up when you've got him sitting down. So that's really cool too. I just think he's the cutest little thing. Color wise, you may have seen in the picture from the pattern that it, it's an all white rooster. I had to, do the colors look familiar? I had to base it on my favorite rooster of all time. Uh, I just had to. I'm kind of sad that I didn't throw some green tail feathers in there. You know, those roosters with the green, beautiful green tail feathers. I was sorely tempted, but for the sake of, of making him look as foghorn leghorn as possible, I stuck with the brown. So uh, even though it's kind of more inspired by foghorn leghorn than chicken run, <laughs> I'm, still, I'm still absolutely over the moon with him. I think he's the cutest little thing. And uh, yeah, so definitely check out the pattern if you need to get a rooster, a very cute rooster in your life. I didn't change too much. Again, I went with my usual three millimeter hook, my eight ply Australian yarn. I believe I went for size nine safety eyes, which I think worked pretty well. Um, and he's just, he's just the cutest. So highly recommend giving this one a go. One thing I will say, definitely make sure you stuff the heck out of this one especially the head i thought i'd stuffed the head enough but when i went to join the head to the body and i'm actually pretty happy with my sewing for that because sometimes i'm quite messy but i'm really stoked with how it's come together um yeah i had to put extra stuffing in it and it ended up being quite a lot i think it's a fairly odd shape for a head it is spherical but again it's sort of um, sort of wider in the middle here and it, it does come down quite low so he ends up I kept thinking of it as like a flying saucer shape it's sort of a squashed um, <laughs> sphere really a bit of an oval and uh, you really do have to make sure that you pack the stuffing in there to get the proper shape so uh, yeah definitely have a lot of fiber fill on hand that's for sure <laughs> And now onto the movie I've decided to watch that begins with the letter D. And I tell you what, this is one of those films where you kind of really hate to admit that you love it. It's silly, it's stupid, it's ridiculous. Uh, if you're into films that have sort of 13 year old boy type humour to them, uh, that's where I'm going with this. This came out, this is my defence, this came out in 1994. I was nine. So therefore, I thought it was the funniest film ever made. That's, that's my defense, that's what I'm going for. I was nine years old. The fact that I can probably still quote the thing word for word from beginning to end now, uh, and the fact that I still get a hell of a lot of laughs from it, let's just not talk about that. But I've decided to go with 1994's Dumb and Dumber. I know, I'm not feeling too proud right now, but you know what, it just, I was nine, and I, I still really love this movie. <laughs> and for the Amigurumi, brace yourselves, for the Amigurumi, it was really hard for me to go past Harry's lacklustre dog grooming business. Um, so therefore, I've picked out a little dog. I'm hoping to goodness I do a better job on him than Harry does on his dogs. Hopefully I don't get sauce and mustard all over this one. But I found a pattern, and guys, let me introduce you to Lucky. The proper pattern title for this one is Lucky Puppy Amigurumi Pattern, <laughs> which can be found on the website amigurumitoday.com. And I mean, for goodness sake, it's just, it's, I mean, you're looking at a Labrador lover and owner. So I just couldn't go past this. And it's taken all I have not to immediately get my hook stuck into this one. I just, <sighs> So I will see you guys back here in a little less than two weeks. Hopefully I can get myself back on track and back onto some sort of schedule with these videos. It's just been crazy busy here lately. Um, but hopefully I will see you again and I'll discuss my thoughts on the stupid movie that is Dumb and Dumber, but I love it. Uh, and of course introduce you to Lucky. I can't wait to stitch this guy up. I think he's so, so cute. So thank you so much again for watching. If you would like to join in with the movie and stitch challenge definitely be sure to check it out give it a go have a watch of other people's films search for hashtag movie and stitch on youtube and all over your socials and see what other people are watching and hooking up it's been so much fun hope you enjoyed this guys take care and i'll see you real soon